Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here, back at it again with more D&D stories, and today we're going to be talking about those unfortunate events that make you feel like the universe is against you. What is the unluckiest thing that has happened to your character? Uh, we got shipwrecked and lost basically all our possessions. That was the starting point of our campaign. The really unlucky part about that was that we, cleric champion and a ranger with strong religious beliefs, ended up in a country that only worships one deity and bans all others. So all of us had to hide our holy symbols and lie just to stay alive. At least our cleric and champion were allowed to lie by their codex. Only the ranger's deity forbids lying, but he could have his religious crises without losing powers. Last Cyberpunk Red Session, we were supposed to grab a pricey motorcycle at the harbor. We spent something like 20 minutes trying to deal with the admin side of things, while the Netrunner hacks their systems to try and see if they can muddle things enough to get them to release the package to us. We had legit paperwork, but apparently someone else is trying to claim them. Being a paranoid git, my character heads down to the docks on her own to see if she can identify the container with the goods and uh, keep an eye on it, you know, wink wink. Keep in mind, she's alone right then. Just as she finds it, a van screeches in and starts unloading bad guys. Three of them to start with. Ah shit, alright, I have grenades and a grenade launcher, so I'll just assume hostile intent, open fire and ask questions later. Well, except despite having good reflexes and an initiative booster cyberware, eh, she doesn't go first. Ah well, can dodge bullets at least. First enemy shoots, get a good dodge roll, not enough, he hits. It's a crit wound too, arm is torn off. Ah crap, it's the right arm, where she has expensive cyberware. Double crap, loses about a quarter of her health. It hurts, but it's survivable. My turn. I'm pouring in luck to help the throw. I still miss, oh come on! Grenade still hits roughly where I want. Damage roll, 6d6, four ones. Are you fucking kidding me? Run into cover. No other hits during the next round. More enemies crawl out of the van, ah shit. Friends are coming, but even running, they are still three rounds out or so. Second turn for me, another thrown grenade at the van. Oh, it hits this time, massive damage roll, crit wounds, half the enemy's dead. Yes, that's more like it. Run into cover again. Enemy turn. Here, have a taste of your own medicine, bitch. <laughs> Grenade lands. I'm in the explosion area. Ha fa! GM goes. Oh, I uh, need to roll tarot. So a tarot roll means at least three sixes rolled in one damage roll. I'm <laughs> sweating bullets here. Tarot says enemy gets a free turn. Fuck, 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 fuck. Total damage brings me down to 12 HP and my armor is shredded. Ha, fuck. Thankfully though, enemy doesn't have another frag and doesn't have an angle. Run away bravely with a quarter of health. The enemy corners her. Try to escape by climbing up a container, fail. Is this her end? Drop a smoke at her feet, should help with not getting hit. Enemy goes for melee though, dodge the first attack, no problem. Not the second though, ah, three HP, dear God. All over a motorcycle. Other enemy doesn't care about his friend, goes for a grenade, misses. Takes out his friend, but not me. Hightail it. That bastard pursues me. Last chance though, grenade in his direction, miss. Dispersal roll still keeps the target in, damage roll kills him. Woo! In the meantime, last remaining enemy has been handled by my friends. All while my character proceeded to collapse in the front seat of our own van. That's, I mean, you got, the dice gods hated you, but they also loved you. Dragonborn God Paladin. Critical fails in a row. He failed to do the jump over the ravine. The rope he was tied to snapped under his heavy weight. He tried to grab a hold to the wall, but the stone gave way. Well, he lived, but with three HP. Time for my sextuple nice nat one story. This is the story of how I was crowned the king of nat ones. I was having awful luck one session, so when I rolled a nat one, one, when climbing up a cliff face, I was not surprised. So after I fell comically down to the bottom and was now separated from the party, I was met by a group of armored guards that wanted me to come with them due to an unrelated incident regarding a crying child and my boot. Combat was initiated, with me attacking the first. 
following as every role I did in this combat, chronologically too. Nat 1, number 2, on initial attack, which for some reason I decided on being an in-armored attack. Broke my PC's hand. Mm. Nat 1, 3 to 5, all against spell saves. I reached 0 HP. Yeah, that was good. And my last Nat 1, 6, death save, which put me at 2 failures. And my next roll was a 4. And that's how I became the king of Nat 1s. You're welcome. This happened uh, just a couple days ago. We got teleported to the middle of the Ashen Plague Desert. Way found one of the Ashen Zombies nearby, and after a short fight with it, I eventually cut it down, only to find it was beginning to stitch itself back together, and as it stood, it gargled out and a horde of them stood up out of the sand. Oh, so we quickly ran away a bit. They are all horribly slow, but we still ran at full speed away for at least a couple minutes just to gain some distance. After a slow to a walk, our warlock used druid craft to see what the weather for the approaching night was. All we got back was cold and uncontrolled magic storm. <laughs> Thankfully, we had a scroll of Leoman's tiny hut. By the time we decided to use it to sleep for the night, the sun had set. A sheet of ice was spreading out rapidly across the sand, and house-sized chunks of ice began falling as we stepped inside. Our wizard, oh, for fuck's sake, our wizard was about an hour into our rest, realizing that he should have copied the scroll into his book before casting it, and with wise as ever words asked, Hey, could I try and copy the spell from the scroll from memory? The DM says, well, <laughs> you could certainly try, but you're going to have to make an intelligence check, and I'm telling you now, you're going to need an at 20. Are you sure about this? Wizard, after thinking for a minute or so, um, yeah, what, what, what could go wrong? He rolls a 12, of all things. Okay, so those not currently asleep, I need you to all roll a con save to resist the effects of a surge of wild magic. My sleeping ass just auto fails, has to roll a d100, 76 or something. All right, now roll a d6, gets a six. The DM starts laughing uncontrollably and after a bit says, all right, so Vatten the elf, which is me, is now Vatten the goblin. In short, magic bullshit. Our wizard gets gender swapped again for the third time. Our dragonborn monk is now a walking rainbow. And my character, once a tall elf fighter, is now a short goblin fighter. Mm. Well, I died instantly at level two because I got crit with max damage. Had it not been max damage, I would have gone down. And to be honest, it was kind of my fault since it was my first character ever, and I didn't really distribute stats well. And he was a wild magic sorcerer, so I was kind of asking for something funny like that to happen anyways. My second level tiefling, Hexlock, pissed off a demon lord and swallowed a sword from the outside of his stomach. Some background, though, investigator background, and the Hexlock had a bit of an attitude. Really have to remember to rein in my, um, well, his mouth and attitude next time. I was playing a halfling rogue. I had a plus nine to my dexterity saves. I get hit with a lightning bolt spell and roll a dex save. Nat one. Okay, cool. I can use my halfling luck to re-roll. Nat one. Oh, shit. Had a point of inspiration, so fuck it. Re-roll a third time. Nat one. Ah, damn it. The lightning bolt knocked me unconscious. Roll a death save. Goddamn that one. Oh, that character didn't die that day, but thanks to me remembering I had the uh, <laughs> parapet of wound closure and stabilized instead of making death saves, but she came very close. Literally, the prologue. Rogue was trying to sneak out of a demon-infested city along with his injured friend, but is seen by a demon. But he manages to convince the demon that he's taking the injured survivor to the slaughter. So the demon decides to escort them. Well, naturally, the rogue panics, tries to assassinate the demon and continue with his stuff, but fails, is captured by the demon and taken to an overlord. A late game boss that cannot be beaten now. The DM needed to pull something out of his ass to save my character from dying in the prologue. Once upon a time, my party and I, a vengeance paladin, were fighting some vampires and I happen to have a lightning javelin. We rolled all the saves and the damage, nearly max damage to all three vampires, which all failed their saves, but we forgot to roll the attack roll against the main target. 
so I used Vow of Animity on the vampire and rolled an advantage. Even with advantage, two nat ones. <laughs> And we played critical fumbles, so I threw the lightning javelin straight into my own foot for around 40 damage and nearly killed myself. We all laughed really hard, but my foot is still searing in pain. <laughs> my goblin gloomstalker fell prey to a punji trap, then a pack of ghouls, that was thrown off a mountainside by the big bad evil guy in the party's first interaction. But to top it all off, the DM put my poor little gobbo's soul into a pair of gauntlets meant to hold souls in a semi-purgatory plane. These were worn by a pugilist PC played by someone else. Not my character because I was the DM. I was running an encounter that was a fourth level party of three against around hmm, 20 gnolls. They were spaced out so the characters could easily use cover to only face one or two at a time. It was a well-balanced fight, the way I ran it, of course. Anyway, the paladin is tanking a few of them at once, three or four, I believe, and he's doing okay. Then disaster struck. I rolled two crits in a row on almost max damage. That level four paladin took around 20 damage in one turn. Playing the Sunless Citadel back in the day. Oh, classy. Touch a cart, contract filth fever. Open the door to escape a dungeon, trap. Trap requires a fortitude save, which has already been nerfed by Filth Fever. Critical fail plus a negative five malice. Necromancy damage applies, requiring a second fortitude save in order not to weather a la Indiana Jones. And that's how my rogue wasted away while trying to open a bloody door. You chose poorly, Dr. Jones. We are exploring some cave ruins with me being a cobalt bear totem barbarian. We might have been around 5th or 6th level at the time. Most of the things we faced weren't much to mention since we had a couple of casters. Me and another melee bro and a sneaky little sneak attacker rogue at the time. However, this was when the roper comes in. For the newbies of D&D, imagine a stalagmite with tendrils, one eye, and a large mouth. You like that? No? Neither do we. I am usually up front and center because of my tanky ass. This was one monster. How hard could it be? I get grappled and sent into this thing's mouth. Oh, I'm not panicking. Then it bites and takes half of my health, if not more. I don't know how or why, but another big hit and I am gone. I should be freed by now, but I'm not for some reason. How is the party tank getting torn apart in one hit? It was a... Five against one fight, nonetheless, and it did die with me still alive, but if anyone else were to have gotten snagged, they were rolling death saves. Maybe the other fighter would be okay, but still gravely hurt. Yeah, that sounds intense and disgusting. Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier checking in after the vid. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and of course, down in the comments below, let me, let Mr. Ripper, let us all know what is the unluckiest thing that's happened to your character in a campaign or a character that you've seen possibly as well? We'll put that in the video. You never know. And that said, I just want to say thank you all for being here. I love you all. I really do. And I truly hope that April, May, June, July, the rest of the 2023 is actually a good year for all of you. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.